Good morning, everyone. Uh, I will just wait uh, maybe a minute so people get a seat. So in the meantime, uh, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Fran Mendez. I come from, from Barcelona. I was recently working for New Relic. Um, you, some of you may know. Um, and right now, I started a new adventure of founding uh, Async API. Uh, and that's what I'm going to talk today about. So, let's play a little bit of bingo. Let's play a game. Uh, how many of you, uh, I guess, uh, how many of you uh, really know how bingo works? Like, the basics of the game. Uh, can you raise your hand? Okay, I, I, I guess everyone, right? Um, so let's suppose that I, I am in the bingo manager. I don't know the name in, in English, to be honest. Uh, let's suppose that I'm here with, uh, you know, with this thin, uh, with the balls, and I catch a ball and say, uh, five. What you're actually doing, if you're playing bingo, you're gonna look, and you're gonna try to find the five and mark it. Okay. And eventually, what's gonna happen is that some of you is gonna say um, line or bingo, right? So nobody, nobody seems to 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 uh, to um, feel like this communication is awkward or anything, right? It's natural, right? It's, it's, it feels like natural. Why it, it isn't in technology then? I'm going to explain a little bit better. We're very used to request response patterns in technology, with APIs especially. That's why uh, we're here today for APIs. So when you make a request, you actually get to wait until you get the response. And then you proceed to the next thing. But that, that's not what's, what's happening with the bingo example, right? So you don't, I don't actually, if, if I tell you the number, uh, I don't get to wait for you to tell me anything, to tell me a response. I just continue, right? Until when? Until I receive a message from you. And that's what I'm going to talk about today about messaging APIs. There's another paradigm, paradigm in, uh, in APIs, which is not request response. It's event driven or message driven, call it whatever you want. It's not the same, but mostly the same. So async API is actually, uh, how many of you heard about Swagger or Open API before? Wow, nice. How many of you uh, have used <laughs> Open API? Wow, pretty. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna use uh, what uh, the description that API handyman uh, um, did in the past about async API, and it's Swagger for messaging. It's not for uh, request response. So this is gonna be uh, Kafka. This is gonna be AMQP. MQTT, WebSockets, these things cannot be described with, with OpenAPI, and it's done on purpose to keep it simple. So, you, so vendors <laughs> don't get crazy creating tooling for all these uh, uh, protocols. And, and I also want to, to, to ask you uh, something. How many of you are using Kafka in production? Okay, less, but... Still something. Uh, how many of you are using Rabbit and Q for anything? A bit more, I was expecting that. And WebSockets? Okay, a lot, yeah. So, I'm sure that all of you who are uh, using Kafka, WebSockets, and all these uh, messaging technologies have experienced the mess that it is, the, the, the explosion of topics uh, 
for those who don't know what a topic is, a topic is a channel where the message flow, okay? You can have many topics, many channels, and you can send messages, exchange messages between systems uh, through the, these channels. So in, in big companies, like I was working in Neuralic recently, the explosion of topics, like in Kafka topics, for instance, it's amazing. And, 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 and Neuralic is not one of the biggest companies. And it's not even near. And the, the, the number of topics was uh, certainly huge. And the worst thing is it was unknown. And that's what's, that's, that is what was worrying me. Like only the Kafka, the, the team in charge of the Kafka cluster knew about how many uh, uh, topics they have but they don't know anything about it. They just know the name of the topic and there are messages flowing there, I don't know. Yeah, there's some activity here. But nobody in the company was actually aware of uh, what was being pushed in these uh, topics, this information. This, this is the, the, the same example as we have like lots of APIs and nobody know the number of APIs we have. So it led to an explosion of topics because people were building things repeatedly. People, were, people implemented things and they were pushing this information in the topic, but the rest of the company didn't know. So when a new, when a new team needed something, the same thing, they implemented it again in a new topic, and they were pushing this, the same thing in a different topic. And as you can imagine, this is, I mean, that's an, at least undesirable, right? So, I'm gonna, before, this is uh, like, I want you to, to understand what the problematic is uh, in, in this area of APIs, and I'm calling it APIs on purpose, because even if it's Kafka, if it's RabbitMQ, if it's queues and messages, this is an API. We are sending messages that are going to uh, produce a change in another system. This is what you do with a, with a request, right? You call it, you send a message via HTTP, and it produces a change in the, in the other system. The only difference is that you don't get a, a response, right? So before proceeding, uh, let me just jump here for a quick introduction. Okay, I think this is fine, right? Can you all see it? The ones from behind, is it okay? <laughs> Perfect. So, as you told me that you uh, know how um, Swagger OpenAPI works, and I, I have to stop saying Swagger or they <laughs> OpenAPI folks are gonna kill me. <laughs> uh, this is pretty much like an OpenAPI document, right? Um, this is, you have the, on the first line, you have async API, you have info, so it's information about your API, you have servers, so servers are where you actually get to reach the API, and there's something different from OpenAPI here already, which is the scheme here, okay? So as you can see, there's something called MQTT here, and here you have secure MQTT. Um, for those of you who don't know what MQTT is, this is a very lightweight protocol and it's very used in Internet of Things, which is all about messages. Because as you can imagine, you have devices, uh, like sensors or all kinds of devices connected, and they are not they are not polling the server all the time, you know, uh, to get information because otherwise it will drain the battery, and it will the, the, and the, the cost of the connection will increase as well. Um, m many of these devices are are um, connected via 4G or uh, recently 5G, so this is money. 
So MQTT is, is, is all about that. It's about keeping uh, the, the, the connection very lightweight and it doesn't consume so much battery. This example of, uh, of uh, an API is what I call the strict lights API. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain briefly what it is. Imagine that we have a, a, a strict light, a smart city uh, company, if you want. And we've been given the task uh, to install street lights all around the city. And we want to measure the light that this, uh, um, this street lights have around. And we want to be able to, at some point, dim the lights of some of, some of the, the street lights, right? So if you notice already, what I'm saying here is we want to receive data from the street lights, but we also want to send data to the street lights. We want to tell them, hey, do something. But we also want to receive events like, hey, the lightning conditions, the lighting conditions have changed. So this is the, the, the new value, okay? So I implemented uh, a very simple uh, and on-purpose uh, async API document here. And the topics, as I was saying, is the channels. You can call it channels if you want. And we have something here like street lights, ID, lighting, measured. Okay. This is pretty much, if you're familiar with OpenAPI, like the path. Okay. This is like the path where you send a request. And we're saying here that as a client, as a consumer of, of this API, we can publish. We can publish information. And this information is going to be about light has been measured. We will talk about more uh, about this, this, uh, this message. And then you have another channel, which is about an order. Uh, I want to make it clear. This API is like the one installed inside, inside a strip light, uh, a strip light device. Okay. So the strict light can subscribe to receive the order, the command, or can send information. That's why the other one was published. Okay, and this this information is going to be this command is going to be dim, dim the light uh, to a certain percentage or whatever. So light measured that I was explaining before is defined here. We have light measured in the uh, light measured in the messages. This is also different from OpenAPI and this message ha has a payload, which is an object, and it has a key called lumens. For those uh, who don't know what lumen is, this is like uh, uh, how the light gets uh, measured. This is like meters in the, for, for distance, right? Uh, and then you have type, which is an integer, minimum zero. Uh, zero will be like totally dark, right? And format is going to be in, uh, an integer and description. And we also have a field here, which is a timestamp. Because every time we receive a message from the, from the street light telling us that the lighting condition has uh, changed, we want to understand when this measure has been, um, has been taken. Remember that the, 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 the street light maybe is Mm, saving uh, some of this information and sending uh, this information uh, every minute. So we might receive in a single message a bunch of, uh, of these changes, right? And we have a command which is dim and the summary, uh, as the summary explained, changes the light intensity in the, in the street light. It has a percentage field. And it has a number, like the maximum is going to be 100% because it's a percentage. And it will just uh, change the, 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 it will dim the light in the, in the, in the, in the um, a street light. So this is, uh, this is an example of uh, how you can write uh, a simple document, async API document on the left side. And on the right side, you get to uh, generate documentation, like pretty much like OpenAPI does with uh, some tooling for OpenAPI that uh, OpenAPI do uh, for documentation and for human readable purposes, right? But this is not for generating documentation only. 
from, from there. You can generate code. Uh, you can just uh, build mocks to test your API. You can pretty much do whatever you want. It's actually a definition of your API, and it's not the documentation of your API, right? So coming back. So I want to make it uh, clear. This is a specification. This is not a tool. This is not um, a service or, or, or something that you can use. This is a, like an, uh, an RFC. It's a specification. The idea for this specification is to describe event-driven microservices, IoT APIs, streaming APIs, and pretty much anything that it's message uh, base, right? We care, we care about the protocol um, because we don't want, we don't want uh, uh, to put pressure on the vendor side. And we restricted the, the list of protocols that it supports to a bigger uh, list of protocols that appear here. But um, mainly the, the, the most uses uh, are uh, AMQP, MQTT, WebSockets, and Kafka, and, and we're exploring more. So um, we, uh, so far, we provide some docu uh, documentation generators and code generators, and some people are working on uh, tests. Um, this is not, uh, as I said, this the, the async API is a specification, but a specification is useless without tooling, right? So we're also trying to provide some tooling around it, and some people are, are helping. I got I got the the, the recently uh, some news from some big companies. Uh, I'm not sure if I could mention, but uh, let's just stick with a bank. It's a big bank. You know that banks are mostly match message based because uh, the, all the things they, they do are transactions. And if, the, if a transaction uh, goes wrong, you don't revert, you don't delete the transaction. You, uh, you do another transaction which complements the other, right? So it's, it's, it's event-based. Uh, uh, that's how oh, the, the, the banks work. And I got information from a bank telling me that they Change it last year. The whole, the whole uh, Im implementation of the, of how things work uh, to rely on async API. <laughs> that was like scary. <laughs> I have to I have to admit that this this has been a, a project of mine for the last uh, uh, two years. But it was a side project. Uh, <laughs> like right, it's not anymore. But it was a side project. And so just to give you a potential of how people use it. Uh, an, an idea of the potential of how people can use it, and actually, I have no much. I, I don't have so much information about how they're using it because, as you can imagine, this is confidential for them, right? So why? Just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question here. Will you sign a contract with a company or someone? Uh, if it's not written somewhere? Right, OK. So why are we doing this then in, in technology, and especially with, uh, uh, with this kind of APIs? We are publishing messages in, in a bucket there in some place, and we're subscribing there because we trust the message is going to be uh, what we need. And then let's pray, right? Let's pray, and, and, and hopefully the one who's producing messages doesn't change the format and break our system, right? Uh, Async API is a contract. And as a contract, we need a common language so we can negotiate what you want to consume and what I want to produce and so we can understand each other, right? The whole idea behind Async API was to make it machine readable. So the idea is that it has a, a specific format, like OpenAPI does, but to keep it simple as well. 
uh, for humans to read it uh, at a glance, right? So far, as I, I mentioned before, it can help you with the API lifecycle. Uh, again, reinforcing the point that API is not just HTTP APIs. Uh, with the design, you can actually do design first if you want. Documentation, code generation, now people are doing testing, and soon people will start doing API management, so you can, for instance, rate limit uh, how the consumers, at what speed consumers uh, uh, consume your API, or you can monetize it if you want, many things, and monitoring. It's community driven, it's open source. Uh, I actually would like uh, to see more people involved, but so far it's been good. Uh, we are already a team or around 20 person, more or less, with, uh, with the help of some companies there. And, but it's, it's open source, it's gonna be open source forever, and uh, actually soon it's gonna be more than just open source. <laughs> So how to get started, uh, if you want, the editor that I was using in the, in the demonstration before is actually there, it's on editor.asyncapi.org, and if you want to find some code generators and documentation generators afterwards, you can, you can go to the GitHub organization. Um, more info can be um, read or seen in the website, and also you have a an, an Slack auto invite there, in case you want to um, you want to join the, the the Slack channel. I will share the slides afterwards, and and yeah. So what I was saying is, so recently, until recently, it's been a, a side project of mine. And I would like to, to, to announce that this is not a side project of mine anymore. And I'm going to be starting the effort with some of the companies, some companies, and, and, and some of them are listed listen here. Uh, so, so far, I got the support from Salesforce, MuleSoft, SAP, Slack, Keenlane, the API Evangelist, and, and Tipco. And, some other people who wants uh, to join as well, and 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 yeah, so 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 far, at least uh, two of these companies uh, have put already an effort uh, in improving the the async API specification further, with the help of uh, of some engineers. Again, this is open source. The idea behind it is that we're going to be creating the uh, Async API Foundation, so we all keep this project neutral, vendor neutral, so I don't get to, uh, as you can imagine, so I don't get, I, I don't get to favor any, any vendor. And as you can see there, there are some competitors there in this list already, and I did it on purpose. Like, if I want to create a foundation and get support from uh, from companies, I want to make sure that, that the specification is not biased toward uh, a specific company, and that's why I made the effort to get some competitors. So, well, thank you, and I'll be happy to, to answer questions.